here for earlier, and we're going to hear about it uh, again related to some, uh, other, another project uh, looking at it in relation to Massively. Uh, so, I'm not going to invite Massively. Uh, good morning, my name is Abu Bakr Abid, and I'm, I'm going to be talking about the role of CXCR4, which is a G-protein coupled receptor in metastasis, uh, which is the spread of cancer cells throughout the body. So to give an overview of my research, so from, from previous studies, we had known that a certain molecule called stroma-derived factor 1 was present in large quantities and large concentrations in areas where cancer cells tended to metastasize, such as the liver, the lungs, lymph nodes, and the bone. So we also knew that the receptor called CXCR4 was the target of this molecule, SDF1. Based on that, we hypothesized that CXCR4 was responsible for the ability of cancer cells to undergo metastasis. To test our hypothesis, we used a technique known as Western blotting to determine the protein concentrations of, of the protein that we were interested in. For example, we were interested in the ERK pathway, which follows from the CXCR4 receptor. It's downstream for, from that receptor. And from our results, we determined that although CXCR4 might not be directly responsible for um, metastasis, a similar receptor called CXCR7 may be. So what are G-protein coupled receptors? Uh, G-protein coupled receptors are receptors that are involved in signal transition pathways that relay messages from outside the cell to inside the cell. The pathways begin when a ligand, in our case SDF1, binds to the receptor. When it binds to this G-protein coupled receptor, the receptor undergoes a conformational change and activates a G-protein that is located nearby on the cell membrane. The G-protein in turn activates secondary messengers such as cyclic AMP, which uh, disperse throughout the cell and amplify the message brought by the ligand. Uh, the messengers in turn activate transcription factors inside the nucleus. These transcription factors in our case included snail, slug, and twist. And these transcription factors cause protein expression that can change the structure of the cell. So CXCR4 was, is, a, is a part of a family of chemokine receptors. These receptors cause cells to migrate toward certain molecules called cytokines. Um, chemokine receptors were first discovered in lymphocytes, which are infection-fighting white blood cells. Lymphocytes, as they normally circulate throughout the body, they stick close to the endothelial cells of the blood vessel walls. However, once they reach areas of high chemokine concentrations, they stop moving and firmly stick to the blood vessel walls. Then, they undergo diapedesis, so basically they enter the tissue to fight the inflammation. Through this mechanism, chemokines are able to guide lymphocytes to areas where there's infection or inflammation. CFCR4 also plays an important role in the infection of HIV. A class of HIV viruses known as T-tropic HIV um, basically home onto the CXCR4 receptors found on T-cells and use them to enter and infect the T-cells, compromising the immune system of the host. We believe that chemokine receptors play a similar role in the metastasis of cancer cells. Uh, we've seen that cancer cells do not just metastasize randomly throughout the body. Instead, they seem to leave areas of low SDF1 concentration and travel to areas that are higher in SDF1 concentration. And based on the role of chemokine receptors in lymphocytes and HIV, we hypothesize that CXCR4 plays an important role in this uh, metastatic process. Specifically, we believe that CXCR4 plays a role in the epithelial mesenchymal transition, a transformation that is critical to metastatic cancer cells. Because cancer cells cannot, under normal conditions, just metastasize, because they're firmly attached to the epithelial tissue where they originate. Instead, what happens is, in metastatic cancer cells, they somehow get the ability to separate into individual mesenchymal cells, which travel through the bloodstream and travel to new sites where they undergo the reverse process called MET and uh, grow in these new sites. We believe that this process, EMT, is induced by SDF1, the ligand for our CXCR4 receptor. So here's some more distinction between epithelial and mesenchymal cells. Epithelial cells are adhesive and they stay fixed to the epithelial tissue where they're found. Um, they're, it's all, they're also cohesive, so they're connected by tight junctions to other epithelial cells. Mesenchymal cells, on the other hand, are not, not adhesive, they're motile, they're disconnected, which makes them able to cross the endothelium blood vessels and invade new sites. Um, as seen from the figure, epithelial cells are also globular, while mesenchymal cells are more spindle-shaped. And the characteristic that we used to differentiate between them in our western blocks was that epithelial cells express high concentrations of a protein known as E-cadherin, 
while mesenchymal cells tended to express higher concentrations of antiherin and vimentin. So again, the purpose of our project was to determine if there was some association between the activation of the CSCR4 receptor and the onset of characteristics induced by EMT. And based on the, uh, based on the role of the CSCR4 receptor in other types of cells, lymphocytes and HIV, we predicted that yes, EMT would be caused by the activation of the CSCR4 receptor. So um, in our research, we used a number of different cell lines, but the six that yielded the most significant amounts of data were the six shown here. The first two, H292 and H322, were actually lung cancer adenocarcinomas. TU686 was a head and neck, head and neck cancer squamous cell carcinoma, while the last three, 801C, 801D, and 797, were basically lung cancer large, carcin large cell carcinomas. Also of significance, the first three, H292, H322, and TU686, were epithelial cells with limited metastatic potential, while the last three, uh, were mesenchymal cells that showed an EMT phenotype and had a very high potential for metastasis. And the so 801C, of these three, 801D-797 had the most potential. So the, again, the main method that we, the main technique that we utilized was Western blotting. To do this, we first conducted a protein assay to determine the concentration of proteins in the cell line that we were interested in. Using that, we loaded equal amounts of protein in our wells to do gel electrophoresis. And in gel electrophoresis, we basically separated the protein that we were interested in. Then we transferred the proteins from the gel to a nitrocellulose membrane. And then we blocked the membrane and added primary antibodies targeting the specific proteins. And then we added secondary antibodies to target the primary antibodies. The secondary antibodies were linked to a luminous enzyme called ECL. And through this, we were able to develop a film that, that uh, showed the location and concentration of the proteins. So what did we find? Um, so our, initially, we wanted to look at whether SDF1 activated the ERK pathway. So the ERK pathway is downstream of the CXCR4 receptor. And if it was activated, we know that the cell uh, was undergoing EMT. So first, we wanted to make sure that the serum itself would not have growth factors that activated um, the ERK pathway. So we grew, our, um, we grew our cells, the different cell lines, in different concentrations of serum and saw whether that would activate the ERK pathway. We found that as long as we use 1% serum or less, the ERK pathway would not be activated to a significant extent, as seen from the Western blot, the uh, black is faded. But if we use 5% serum, that by itself, even if we did not add SDF, that would activate the ERK pathways and interfere with our results. So we proceeded by using 1% serum initially. To the right uh, shows our control. Um, we use beta-ac and beta tubulin as our control since they're expressed equally by cells under most, uh, under most conditions. And as you can see here, we loaded them about equally. Um, and as another control, we looked at the total arc and total, uh, uh, total arc in, uh, that was expressed in each of these cells. Because the total arc was expressed equally, we knew that the phosphorylation really happened because of the SDF or growth factors found in the serum. But then uh, we continued using 1% serum with our experiment, but we ran into a couple of problems. First, there were some proteins like e adherin that were expressed equally no matter what conditions we grew ourselves in. We expected e adherin to not be expressed as highly when we added SDF, because SDF would cause cells to undergo EMT, and e adherin was a characteristic of epithelial cells. However, this was not the case. e adherin was expressed equally in all cell lines and in all conditions. Also, we found that some transcription factors, such as SNAIL, uh, even in 1% serum, they would be activated. After 24 hours, even if we hadn't added SDF, SNAIL was activated by the growth factors present in the serum itself. So, in order to combat those two problems, we first of all, we decided to use more metastatic uh, cells, 801C and 797. So this would, uh, we hoped that this would, we would find um, more, more potential for EMT. Also, we ended up using 0% serum. In other words, we starved the cells 24 hours prior to um, adding SDF. So what did we find here? Um, we first looked at CXCR4 expression. We expected that CXCR4, since it's uh, an indicator of metastatic ability, we, found, we expected it to be expressed more in 797 cells than A01C cells. However, this was not the case. It was expressed about equally in both cases. 